Then, what do I do with my base angle? Okay, well, my next step is think about quadrants. So, this is where you get that familiar acronym that you were telling me before ASTC, right? So, um, you draw your quadrants, right? And hopefully, you've seen this before. Um, or say it's a central or whatever acronym, mnemonic device you prefer to use. And then what I say is, remember what each of these refers to, okay? It refers to which trig functions are positive in which quadrants, okay? So what this means is, in the first quadrant, which is naught to 90 degrees, all of the trig functions, sine and cos and tan, they're all positive from naught to 90, okay? When you get into the second quadrant, which is 90 to 180 degrees, cosine becomes negative, tan becomes negative, only sine remains as the positive function. And it keeps on going around. What's the third quadrant? What range of angles do I get? 180 to 270. And in this quadrant, only tan is positive. And then lastly, 270 to 360, cosine is positive, the other two are negative. So, in thinking about these quadrants, I then return to the original question. Remember, I ignored the sign when I was working this thing out. Now, I go back to the sign. The sign here is positive, right? So, because it's positive, I'm going to be for sign in the first and second quadrants. Do you see that? If, for example, I had tan theta equals a half, which quadrants would I be in? first and third, right? If I had cos theta equals a half, I would be in first and fourth. Make sense? So you look at the sign and you compare it to which function you've got, and then you identify the quadrants you need. Okay? So I would say, <coughs> since sine theta is positive, okay, theta is in the first and second quadrant. Now, you don't really need to write this amount of explanation in your actual answer, but because this is the first time we've done this in a while, I want to put this in long form so that when you come back to this, rather than just seeing the, the phrase first and second quadrants, you're like, what on earth is that about? This is actually what's being implied, okay? You think about your function, you look at its sign, and then you identify the quadrants that you're in. Okay, does that make sense? So now I want to put my base angle inside each of these quadrants and work out what it's equivalent to. Okay. So in oh, where's my other color? In the first quadrant, it's easy. The angle in here of the base angle in that quadrant is just the base angle. So I'm just going to call that theta. Okay. When you move over into the second quadrant, what does the base angle look like in this quadrant? It's the supplement of theta. So it's going to be 180 degrees minus theta. Okay. Can someone help me out? What about in the third quadrant? What's it going to look like? 180 plus theta. It's 180 plus. So it actually comes from this horizontal, right? 180 degrees plus the base angle. In your final quadrant, over here, again it's from the horizontal. Everything's from the horizontal here. So whipping all the way around would be 360, and then you just go backwards a little bit. 360 degrees minus theta. Okay? So those green things there is what the base angle becomes in each of these quadrants. Okay? Now, you hopefully identified for me its first and second quadrants. So you would say, therefore, theta equals, firstly, 30 degrees. That's my first quadrant solution. Or, and I even write this just so I don't muck it up, 180 minus 30 degrees. That's my second quadrant answer. Okay? So I'll just simplify that. Full stop, done. <coughs> How do you feel about that? Is that okay? Feeling comfortable? Okay. So I'm just going to hit pause there and note that this is, I think, the, the most, uh, for most people, the quickest and easiest way to remember. However, I want to point out there are lots of things that I dislike about this method. Example, why, why is it ASTC? Why not ACTS? or ATSC, like why is it that order? That's kind of mysterious, but we just kind of learn to accept it. So you just sort of 
say, fine, you know, if I remember, then that's all I need to get the answer, right? But it's just first, second, third, fourth. Yes, but why is, why is S, for example, why is that the second quadrant and not the third quadrant? Yes, right? Now, I, I did explain it, but here's the thing. Most students who remember this method, all they remember is just the order, right? Because that's, in some ways, all you need to get the right answer, okay? So this method doesn't need to be understood to be used. Uh, in other, there are other areas, like for example, why is it 180 minus theta? And then 180 plus theta? Why is it not, why is it the horizontal line? Why is it not from this line, the vertical? Like, what do people have against vertical lines? What's up with that, okay? Um, you can make right angles off, you might right angle triangles off there, so why don't we, okay? Um, in fact, if you have a look at what these angles look like, they form this diagram. Maybe you want to put this on the side uh, of your work here. What these angles look like is this. Here's the first quadrant angle, theta. Right? 180 minus theta looks like that. Do you see that? It's like 180 minus. 180 plus will look like that. And then 360 minus will look like that. So it kind of looks like a butterfly. And when I first learned this, I was like, yeah, but why is it that? Why is it not like the other way around, like this? Like a um, like an hourglass, you can still make right angled triangles in there. And the reason is, well, for most people who know this method, no reason because someone said so. You know, so understanding is not required to use this method, which is why I don't like it as much. Okay. Uh, also, if you remember something wrong, like for example, if you identify the quadrants wrong because you don't really understand what is going on, you're like, oh, I said second and third quadrants by mistake. But um, I can't fix that error because I don't really know why it's this versus that. 